Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our podcast friends here today. They have a podcast community that we that, that we, they belong to, and we have a group of people that have an amazing ability to change the world, and these are two people here that have that ability, and they work with children, and they have such great information. Today, we're going to talk about effort and performance, and we're here today with Audra and Matt. And we're, they're from blackbeltbruce.com, and they are just amazing. And so I don't want to waste time. I want to give you the floor and talk about your the concept of effort and performance and how the two differentiate and why one is more important than the other. Well, thank you, Stacey. We're so glad to be on your show. We believe you do such a great job. Uh, oh, we're honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. You know, in raising children, there's so many different fads you see as time goes by. Um, but one of the things that really caught Audra and I's attention was a study um, that Stanford University did. And they actually looked at 50,000 families um, over a 20 year period. And what they were looking at was how do you praise your children to get the best results? Right. Um, and primarily, there's two methods of praising our children. And one is through performance. Um, and the second is really through effort, okay? And so let's start with performance. And, you know, I, uh, uh, being, I guess, a little bit older in my generation, uh, we didn't get praised for a whole lot, truthfully. <laughs> yeah, right. We were just expected to yes. do the right thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. And we were, you know, well, the only time I got news was when I didn't do something right. Right. And then, then I got a big earful, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, a little different than today's times, you know? Yes. So um, in their study, what they did was they wanted to look at if there's a good outcome or a bad outcome, how that type of praise affected the event. Meaning, right. let's say that you had a child in basketball and that child played a game and that game they won or that game they lost. So that would be considered the outcome of the event. Um, and then, of course, the praise follows that outcome, right? Right. On, on what, what did happen or didn't happen. Um, and so um, if we praise for performance, one of the things that, you know, I was raised with was really not even praise, so to speak. Mine was more of a reward in that if you won the basketball game, you got a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and if you didn't win, you got nothing. <laughs> right. You know, type of a thing. Right. Um, and so, you know, one of the things the study showed was, is that when you praise for performance, some children actually start to worry that they're no longer going to be the smartest in the room, or they're going to be the best performer in the room. Right. Meaning, you know, like, um, I, my, I can tell you a little story about me, which um, <clears throat> I was in third grade, and I was in a parochial school. Mm -hmm. And my dad at that time traveled a lot. And so I had a little note on the bedside, uh, my little stand that said, you know, if you get all A's next time, you get a dollar on your report card, right? And that right. was from his dad. That was, your dad left you that note, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 My dad left me that note. And, you know, so me being a, a three in third grade, I was all excited and I really did well in school and, you know, generally. And so I made sure okay, I'm going to get A's in, in that semester. I did, or quarter, I can't remember what they were called at that time, um, but I did. <clears throat> and so I bring the report card home. And of course, my mom says, dad's traveling and he's going to have to worry, work with you on the money part. I don't do that and wait till he gets back. So yeah. I waited two days. Of course, I get home <clears throat> and I tell my dad, yeah, you know, this worked out. I got all A's. And the, the next thing my dad says is, I don't remember giving you that note. I'm like, what? You know, which is probably legitimate. Matt is one of six. He's the oldest of six kids, and <laughs> the dad was working two jobs and busy, busy. But um, anyhow, so go ahead. Yeah, so I was kind of mortified by that. You know, I'm thinking, geez, how can you not remember that? That was like everything to me. You know, as a yeah, kid. for sure. You know, so, uh, so basically, the uh, the school was very small as a parochial school, and then what happened was they got a new teacher in the school that actually wanted to teach art. And so I liked art, but I knew I wasn't any good at it. So at that time, I thought, you know what? If I take this art class and I get a B, 
then my next report card, I won't have all A's. Right. And I won't get my dollar. So I did not sign up for art because I thought, you know, even though I enjoy it, I'm not good at it. Now right. I'm still not good at it today, but you know, um, so <clears throat> that uh, when you recognize for performance and you reward for that, what the study started to show was that kids will actually, just like me, not take a step out of their comfort zone because they're not good at it, even though they might enjoy it. If it doesn't give them the results they're looking for, then they hold themselves back. Yeah, if they're not, right. they're not sure, feeling assured that they're going to be able to master whatever it is because of a past experience, um, they they just don't. Which is really it's uh, it's stifling to who they can be, potentially become, right? Yeah. And, and try new things, and and uh, and that it's very disappointing because as parents, we never want to do anything that pulls our kids down, right? And right. I think we inadvertently or um, without knowing the fact that when we just say, you know, great job, you're so smart, or you know, give a a hollow praise, I call it, right. Uh, that it actually could be detrimental because the children start to identify they, and I want to say it is it, wrongly identify. I guess they, um, they make the correlation on their own that right. I'm smart now. And if, if I do this, I might risk not looking smart. And then and that's really unfortunate. And it's, it was a big eye opener for us to learn that too. Right. And, you know, then the study went a little bit further with kind of coaches right. saying, you know, if they didn't, if the team didn't win the game, then it's because of, right? And and right. they would say it's because you gotta hustle more. You didn't work as a team. You play defense and you didn't shoot all the foul shots at practice like you were supposed to. Or right. <clears throat> so they were really negative. <clears throat> and and I guess most of the coaches tend to be that way in general. At least that's been my personal experience. Yeah. In, in, Back in the old days. Yeah. High school sports, <laughs> you know, they <clears throat> we uh <clears throat> I wouldn't say you know, we had the best coaches, if you will, right? Yeah. It was always a math teacher or a science teacher that right. took on the job of coaching. Yes. And, you know, and, and granted, I believe they did their best, but they weren't trained in that, you know? And yes. so well, they, we, we've just learned so much more. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and because the study is just like this, you know, now we have new information that it was it was new to us even as we were revealing and and researching it um so we're excited to to be able to share this because i think it can help so many kids so uh, right so that's the the 80 percent of the way that most families today praise their children right performance and and partly it's because that's how it was done with you right right so i make the same thing i do the same things that my parents did with me until I make a conscious decision to change. Yeah. And so what the study revealed was that if you praise your children for effort, um, and that's only 20% of America today, right. the outcome is so much better. Yeah. Whether they win or they lose, right? Right. And so um, they want, what they learned by praising for effort, it started to build resilience in the children. Right. right. They learned that if they put, even though they might not have accomplished their goal this time, yes, but, but they learned that if they work hard, they can do a little more next time, a little more next time, and that they can actually maybe master it in time with some perseverance. Yes. Right? And so it wasn't a one-time event. It was showing them that they had to work hard and keep working and keep working. So when we talk, uh, you read so much today about our kids need resilience. Mm -hmm. Our kids need grit. What yes. happened to it? It doesn't exist. The perseverance is gone. Right. Well, maybe there's a way we can praise them to get that back. Yes. And, it, and that's what the study was showing us. Mm -hmm. And so it was so exciting to see that the effort praise worked yes. both in a good outcome and a bad outcome, right? right? So you can say to somebody, even though they maybe didn't win, you know, I, I wow, Johnny, you or Sally, you did a great job. Well, I can see you made five of your free throws and you never do that well at practice. You did outstanding today, right? Or you, you made a personal best today from mm -hmm. working that hard, or you did some great passes, or you, you can find some positive things that they did in that game. Yes. That you can recognize 
hang your hat on and make and show them that they are improving. And, right. and that's all we can do is try to improve our personal best. Yeah. Yes. And I think um, a part of this uh, formula, so to speak, is is that you identify something, a specific trait or a characteristic or something that they did, like so that you can recognize it as a gift that you have that you can improve upon. Right. Um, and we're going to give some examples here at the end um, because it can be kind of confusing, I think, as we even walk through it sometimes. And, and hopefully you, when you're hearing this, Stacey, it makes sense. Are we resonating? It does. does it make sense? It does, because for me, as a person that had an in invisible disability, my parents always praised, they, they didn't, they always praised me for my effort, not mm. my performance, because they wow. didn't want me to feel indifferent and they wanted me to feel that I could do anything I put my mind to. Now, yeah. since I was praised for my effort, each time I got knocked down, I always got back up and I was more determined to do it again and again and again until I was able to accomplish it. And it's so important. Yeah, yeah. So I saw a big difference on that. And my parents never, um, never gave me a really a reward. They always just gave me praise for my effort. And that stuck with me as an adult. So anytime I got knocked down, I got up and I kept you go. going and going and going. Wow. And that is so important because I know there's, there's huge debate over, uh, and parents struggle with this internally and what was done, but like, you know, do you get paid for grades? Right. Um, mm -hmm. That was a big thing with, you know, a lot of my friends when we were growing up. And then especially when my when with our children, you right. know, Johnny gets a 4.0 and his parents give him twenty dollars or whatever it yeah. might be. But and we were of the mindset as parents, um, Matt and myself, was that you have to you're you're getting good grades for your benefit. Yeah. Right. You know? yeah. um, and then people you have the discussion with other parents and they're like, yeah, but that motivates them. And, you know, and. And so there's lots of things we all do right and we do wrong in parenting and, and every kid responds differently. Yeah. But this study really helped us to, to break down and understand that this is a small piece that we can provide for our kids and it's been researched and proven and, um, and it costs you no money yes. and it can elevate their success because let, granted, unfortunately, as it is, you're going to get left, knocked down in life, right? Yeah. And um, if you have a mindset that you can improve and do better, like your parents worked and helped you, mm -hmm. then, then you rise up, you know, you you make your way back on. But if you always are hearing a different kind of, you know, out of boy way to go, um, and it does, and it's just on the end result, yeah, um, it can be kind of um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? it can just be kind of disheartening, you know, it doesn't give you the the effort you need. So. Sure. Well, and I, you know, Stacey, you're so fortunate that your parents understood that praising for effort made that big difference, you know? Um, and, you know, they all, the second part of the study talked about how your mindset grows mm -hmm. or, doesn't grow. or doesn't grow, mm -hmm. right? If you use praise versus effort. Okay. Right. And so they say, if you praise for performance, people have what are called a fixed mindset, okay? Mm -hmm. um, which is not very good in our yeah. society today, right? right? Are you familiar with that term, the fixed yes. mindset? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they say that if you praise for effort, it your, your children develop a growth mindset. Right. And that's exactly what you were talking about, is that when you see something, you believe I can overcome if I keep trying, if I keep working, it will come. And so that internal fortitude that you developed by that type of a reward system or praise system, I should have said praise system, not reward. That was wrong. Uh, my mistake. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that you develop uh, and, and you're living proof of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the blessing there, I believe, is since it was done to you, you might have been more apt to reward your children or your household and your family to potentially yeah. to encourage them in the same manner. Right. Which would really benefit them too. Right. Yes, for sure. And I'll give you another example. We had an actress that came on the show that her child had autism and her child was a low functioning um, autistic child. So she prays for effort and she also helped her with getting her in programs that would help her, all. but she always prays for effort. And that child grew up to be a young woman who became an engineer and she wow. became, and she also wrote a children's book. And so, so she was able to go from 
uh, from from a low function and autistic child to a young woman that was high functioning, and mm -hmm. she was able to become an engineer and an author. And you know, her mother mm -hmm. always prays for effort, never prays for performance. No that's awesome. kidding. Yeah. That's, and that's a proven strategy right there. That's life changing, mm -hmm. right? The empowerment that she got from that, that mom instilled in her, changed her life. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's notable and, and none of us want to do harm. And, um, you know, parents might unknowingly just be doing it because a, like Matt said, that's how we were raised. Um, and gosh, darn it. You're trying to at least praise them. You got to think that's doing good. Right. Yeah. And they found that even though when you do praise for effort, it's not all bad. Um, there are benefits to that. Um, you know, but, or when you praise for, uh, results, I'm sorry. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you praise for results or the outcome, that there are some, you know, some good things to that. Um, but to make that switch uh, consciously, I think is really helpful for folks. You know, in today, uh, we, it's so easy. We have a nephew, um, very smart boy, um, and and he would be considered on that autistic scale. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so his social development is maybe, let's say, a little behind. Um, mm -hmm. Intellectually, you he's two or three grades ahead. Of yeah. where everyone else is at right um you know and one of the things that i'm really i'm trying to work with him on um is i well all correlated to me when i was in high school i i had a uh, a good time i enjoyed the school i was able to earn all a's without a lot of effort let's right. say um i could remember there the, they didn't teach you really a lot quickly when i went to college for the first time holy toledo I was not ready for the speed at which they gave us information. I was not ready to perform at that level. Well, you just had to start paying more attention because he was, <laughs> you know what I mean? He just, he had to think differently. And that was what the challenge was. That first semester, oh my gosh, I'm thinking, I how do people do this? I couldn't figure it out. I uh, I didn't develop good study habits to carry me through. Right. You know, and 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 that was my mistake, so to speak. I mm -hmm. didn't I didn't have to do it in high school, so I didn't know it. I didn't learn it, right? Right. Um, and and so now with the this our nephew, uh, I tried to instill in him because right now academically he is superior, really believe it or not, to his classmates, right? right. Whether whatever it might be, but he he and he, and his mom rewards him so well in a way, but. You got an A. You got right. Yeah. And she's rewarding him some because I'm the oldest of six children. So she's rewarding him in a similar way as I was. Right. So now I'm trying to help her understand. Hey, he is top dog now, but when you go to college, you know, you see a whole nother level of yes. kids' intelligence that you were not exposed to in your lower grades that now you have to compete with. Yes. If you, if you don't develop those habits. And you don't develop some of that internal fortitude and, and those things. You know, one of the biggest things they talked about when you praise for the effort is you don't have that same fear of failure. Yes. It's okay to try. Mm -hmm. It's okay not to do it the first time, the second time. But you have that resilience to keep going and build on it. Right. right. Yeah. And, and that's really, it gets even to be more of a challenge if you have a child who's naturally athletic and does great at sports all the time, it's right. an expectation that he's yeah. going to do or she's going to do great. Right. Same with academics. If you have that child that, you know, always gets the straight A's, you're kind of like, hey, good job, you know, and and, and it's it's a struggle. They don't hit the, the struggles, like Matt said, until he got to college. And so you have to figure out how to be better equipped. Um, and yeah, although you have the benefit of them being gifted in a particular area or excelling, um, we have to plan when life doesn't, isn't that easy anymore, right? Right. For sure. Neither of my parents went to college. Right. So they they didn't know how to prepare you for it. No. What was coming. Yeah. Right. No. And so, you know, they just did the best they knew how. Yeah, that's what we're all trying to do, I think, right? I always try to believe that everybody's doing the best they can. Yes, <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that's the case, yeah. you know. So um, I think it's important just to let more parents know and even grandparents can be a part of this too you know oh, for sure for sure teachers can praise differently you know yes. so I think it's an important topic so go ahead yeah so they just talked about some of the negatives of praising for performance 
uh, is that children believe or can start to believe that only the outcome matters, right? Mm -hmm. Which it doesn't because right. it, it should be a process, of, yes. of growing, right? Um, some of those children uh, actually become afraid to try new things. Yes. Because they're no longer the best. Um, right. And they start to develop a lot of internal pressure and anxiety on themselves. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because they're not always the best. Well, um, they're just afraid. Yeah. They're afraid if I don't do this well, then everybody's going to find out I don't, I'm not as good as I think I am, you know, and that's, that's yeah. tough for anyone to swallow. So go ahead. Sorry. And that internal, let's say motivation to try new things, just like me not being willing to take the art class. Yeah. Because I was afraid I wasn't going to be the best. And I wouldn't be on the top. And that's okay. That's yeah. the way it is. No one is born there, right? You have to work. Who's the big, uh, who was the basketball player that uh, got cut? Oh, well, Michael Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan, I think. Mm -hmm. Is it Michael Jordan? Yeah. yeah. He was, but he was determined. And um, yeah, and I'm sure back in his day when he was growing up, because he's more our age, you know, yeah. uh, that, uh, yeah, his parents weren't worried about how they praised him. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> We, yeah. They didn't even think about those things. And oh my gosh. See, we just, you, you had to put food on the table. Those, his parents were like, you know, I don't know their personal story, obviously, but back in that generation as a whole, yeah. it's like, I, I have to feed my family. The dad might be working two jobs and, and we're here to raise our kids. We didn't worry about how they felt about things. Right. No. Nobody gave that a thought. So, right. Exactly. So, I, I, so to me, this study really flows into another one that we saw about and read about, which is it's so important for parents to help develop yes. their children's emotional bank account, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's what and, it is. And yeah. so, you know, so Audra, if I was going to say that emotional bank account for your child, what does that mean? In your yeah. Mind? Well, and that's where it's an exciting concept because it's, it's how they feel capable, you know, are they ready to handle? Cause when we, we send them off into the world, even on a regular school day as a young child, you know, there's all kinds of negative behaviors and, and things they're going to see. And, and sometimes, you know, the, even the adults they run into um, can kind of knock you down a peg or two. And, and when you have that growth mindset and you have that emotional bank account, yes. um, it, you're, you're kind of, you're strong enough inside that you you're going to take a hit, but it's not going to, you know, make you fall down, so to speak. And uh, in a figurative sense, uh, stance, but, um, but yeah, it's about building them up. And then we want it to be overflowing when they, you know, when they're ready to leave the nest, so to yes. speak, because they need to believe in themselves. And if exactly. our kids don't have that belief in like, I can do this or yeah, I'm going to make a mistake. Yeah. There's going to be a hiccup, but we want them to have that confidence. Um, and we kind of, uh, align that with that emotional bank account. So in, you know, Stacy, the comments that you had made earlier about how your parents mm -hmm. praised you for your effort, it showed you, it taught you, you knew inside that if you worked hard, it's a matter of effort. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, you could do it. Right. It was attainable. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that also helps with that peer pressure issue that, that we see today. Yeah. Where, you know, the kids aren't, uh, they're afraid to stand up for themselves. They know right and wrong. Yeah. They just won't do it, right. uh, so to speak, um, because they're looking at the situation. How do I fit in? Right. Yes. What things are there, you know, and with that pot, with that big emotional bank account, they can stand up and say, you know what? This isn't right. Right. We're not supposed to do this. This is, we were taught better than this. And they don't go along, you know, and those are the things that, we really want for our children so that right. they can stand up on their own there yes. when, when you're not there. Right. And so that for praising for the effort then rolls right into building that big emotional bank account that they take with them when they leave your home. And, and those are the best presents we can give our children, right? It's not, yes. an, it's not money. It's not a, a gifts like that. It's, who they are internally, mm -hmm. who they believe they can become, and they have faith in themselves that they can overcome if they work hard enough and they challenge themselves. And it's okay to get help. No one can get there alone, right? Yes. And, and that fear of failure is they haven't been taught it's okay to ask for help. Yes. It's okay to get somebody involved and say, you know what, 
I'm not getting this, bring it forward, you know, get, get me some development help. Um, yeah. they're, it's a it's a funny situation now that you bring that up that we ran into with our kids uh, a few of them that um, and Matt and I are notorious for asking for help like if we don't know you know because there's so much new and out in the world but like if um, you know taking a trip on an airplane or something and we would tell one of our kids if they were younger and they would have to fly by themselves I'm like well, yeah. just somebody yeah. in the blue uniform where do I go you know to catch exactly. my next exactly yeah and they're like you kind of looking at us like deers and him like, I'm not going to ask. No, you, that's what we do. And we were kind of befuddled. We're like, we, they always see us asking for help. We're not yeah. afraid to ask, you know, when we, you don't know, you don't know. The only way you're exactly. going to figure it out is you can try all an air or you can ask somebody. And so we would ask, and it was surprising that um, a couple of our kids were just like, I don't want to ask, you know, yeah. we're like, you don't have to know everything. I don't know where you think you're supposed to know it all. And so that was the experience that we were like, okay, we can work through this, but. You know, when we would see martial arts kids come into our school, one of the things I could identify so quickly is the ones that felt they knew everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a pressure that they internally yeah. put on themselves. Right. Right. Um, and the first thing I always tried to do was sit them down and say, guess what? If you already knew how to do this, you wouldn't need to come. Right. It's okay. You don't know this. Yes. It's our job to teach you. So in this class, I want you to raise your hand. Mm -hmm. I want you to ask for help. That really helped a lot of them, I think. And it taught a lot of the kids. It was okay to ask for help. It was okay not to know everything. Right. And so that's what I hope some of the parents get out of this is when you're asking your children or teaching them or showing them something, make it OK that they ask. Right. For, for help. Right. Not uh, don't laugh at them or make fun of them or. Yeah. We've seen that before, it, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, I I'll, I'll give you a little example, which, you know, I, where we grew up on was a rural area. And so we grew up kind of on a farm and right. um, we uh, we had to put fence up for the cows that we had. And right. so we had to dig all those post holes by hand. And so I don't know if you've seen it. You have a, a metal stud bar kind of that you put in the dirt to break yes. it up. And mm -hmm. then you have a little digger that you put in there and you pull up the dirt and you get it out and then you put the pole in. Well, it was funny, you know, my dad and I were working and we get to this next pole um, and he kind of whacks me in the head. And I'm like, what is going on? And he's like, how many more holes do we have to do to, until, you know, I need that stud bar? <laughs> I'm like, you didn't even ask for it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so he just, you know, it wasn't, it, we had a routine yet. It wasn't, you know, and I didn't even know. And I get whacked in the head and I'm like, I didn't even do anything. Right, exactly. So, you Supposed know, to read his mind, I guess. Evidently, I missed the mind melt that was going on. Your telepathy wasn't working at the moment. It wasn't working at the time, you know, um, and that, you know, and so to me, you know, I... Uh, yeah, I think it's a, yeah, it's a very good point that we as parents need to, um, to let them know and say, do you know what's, ex do you, does this make sense? Do you know what you're expected to do? And, and let them say no, um, you know, and, and help them figure it out or encourage them what, what doesn't make sense to you and encourage them to ask the questions. Um, that way they can ex have more opportunity, right? To learn. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, it, it's, you want them, uh, I think the children today have so much more abilities in a way that we did as yes. children, that that knowledge level is increasing. Mm -hmm. the, the schools are expecting more out of the children today to read math, science, things that they're covering now, we never even talked about in high school. No. Great school, right it, they're so advanced really um you know <laughs> and then they're making us feel like our our methods were so archaic like cursive you know yeah like, well i was very upset when they took that out of the school system i, <laughs> I, I felt like it was very good it, it helped them use different parts of their mind and yeah. it was it was something it, that i thought that they should they should learn i you yeah. know i uh I was very uh, upset because like my first my first child learned cursive, but my second and third child, they took it out. So they yeah. you couldn't even write them a card because in cursive yes. because they, they couldn't read it. But yeah. one thing I, I wanted to make a good point is, is that when you do effort versus performance, when you are um, 
when you are just um, praising for performance, they are inside a, a certain box where they feel that, okay, if I don't meet up to this certain standard, then it, I'm not good enough. And then, so what happens is, is that they develop low self-esteem and low self-esteem leads to followers not leaders mm -hmm. and then those people become followers and they don't have a mind of their own and when they they when they do not meet the standards of what society gives us as mm -hmm. this the standards standards they um it kind of puts them into like a hole so mm -hmm. you know um yes. so they can't excel they have a very hard time excelling and they get stuck in life so yes. they, they, you know, either they become underachievers or they just go with the flow mm -hmm. and they're not happy and they lose that, that sense of self-worth and, and happiness within themselves. Yeah. So if you well are praised wow. for effort, then usually those people excel and they also have self high self-esteem and mm -hmm. they also, they feel they, they're, they're the ones to be more likely leaders and yeah. the others are more likely to be followers and just going with the flow of whatever society says is trending. And this is what society says you should be doing when it's really not what society wants. It's what you want and what you need as an individual. So, okay. it's, you know, yeah. so it's really important to know the difference of what's going to happen, the, the outcome, if you do just do you praise for performance you yeah. know because you, you're you fixed in in a, in, a, in a little gray box i call it and so then you think well if i don't meet up to those standards you know you can't see outside the box because you're mm -hmm. a follower not a leader right yes. leaders think outside the box yeah you know, they challenge they're, the they're norms never, yes yeah. yeah exactly and then for asking for help what came to my mind was that when you in society you'll notice most men i gotta commend you for asking most men do not like to ask for help. For some reason, it puts a damper on their their masculinity, and they do not like to ask for help. You mm -hmm. know, and I'm always the one to ask for help. If I don't know something, I have no problem walking up to somebody and asking a question and getting the answer. Yeah, Where, right. like for directions. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen most men want to ask for directions when they're lost? <laughs> you know, right. and. Yeah. and so that's a great example. My husband yeah. could be lost. We could be in the car, but he won't ask for directions. I'll mm -hmm. be the one that gets frustrated. And I was like, I'm just going to ask for directions and put yeah. down the window and say, do you know how to get to blah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah that's then, a long standard joke. Yeah, that is yeah. a great analogy that, yeah, we all can relate to. And yeah, I'll, I'll commend Matt because he is really one of the smartest guys I know. Um, and uh, he, but he accredits it to, he's not afraid to ask. And he learns so much when he asks and he asks such great questions, you know, to, to take it deeper. And, but you're right. In, in general, men are just kind of like, ah, yeah, I'm going to figure this out, which is admirable, but sometimes it wastes a lot of time. And then if you, if you uh, laugh at someone for asking, or, yeah. you know, that oh. also dampers on their self-esteem and Crushing. they're not going to ask. And that's yes. the reason why so many people don't ask, you know, is right. because they were made fun of at some point. Yes. People yes. don't realize that our childhood really plays a big part of who we are as an adult. So mm -hmm. if you were laughed at for asking questions when you were younger, because you didn't understand something, that's going to, that's going to create low self-esteem and oh, yeah. the fear of asking. Mm -hmm. So then you get back to the followers versus leaders and they're more likely to be followers. They're more likely to be introverts and not want to ask for help. So how mm -hmm. can you grow if you don't ask for help and how can you grow if you don't have the qualities and, and to be able to be a leader to believe in your yes wow. well believe said. in yourself yeah. mm -hmm. in, in this world we need leaders today yes right? more than There's ever more than ever right and you know i worry that we're not instilling these basic foundational skills in these young children to be our next leaders yes yeah. It's, it's real scary that way. Now, one of the things that Audra developed or came up with is what she calls. Oh, yeah. It's called a verbal DAP. You know what a DAP is when you kind of, you know. You're yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's a way to kind of give the praise. Um, and it, the DAP is, we call it DAP because you, you're praising them for something they do or a particular action. And then the P is, you know, a, a, a personality trait or something that, you um, uh, it really exemplifies who they are as that person, that child you're talking to. 
And then we want to give evidence at the end. That's an important component of it. So, you know, we have a formula and we have this in our booklet that we're happy to give a link to at the end here um, that just talks about how to praise for the uh, the effort and not the result. But right. really it comes down to, you know, you, maybe the, the key component would be you say your name, like Stacy. Mm -hmm. What I, and then you pick a, uh, admirable, a word like love, admire, respect, or appreciate. What I love about you is how when you were struggling with, you know, um, uh, your arms and trying to go through the physical therapy, that you never gave up. You just mm -hmm. kept trying it. And I saw you day after day pushing through it. And that's the evidence, right? So we, right. we have a concrete thing that you were doing. And then I evidence it at the end because I saw you working day by day. Right. And when you hear that is, you know, good job, Stacy. I like how you're doing your exercises. Right. It kind of just falls flat, right? Yeah. And, and it's not bad. And that's the thing. I don't want parents to stop giving any praise because they get caught up in, am I giving up for effort? Am I doing it right? keep going because, and, and it's through practice. So we have a, a, a small formula um, that we have. And like we said, it's called the verbal DAP, mm -hmm. um, but anybody can do it, but it, you know, we can, you can walk through it, you can practice it a little bit and we give you the formula. And I think it's really helpful to help you kind of elevate your kids. And when you get in the practice and habit of doing it, yeah, not only does it work for your kids, but it can work with employees that you may have, you right. know, it can work with, um, uh, colleagues or your best friend or a spouse because it just really it it uh, goes to the core yes of who you are and I think and and we know that when we um I don't recognize someone for who they are as opposed to an accomplishment yeah the wind is there so it's just exciting so we we love to share that so but go ahead yeah no so how how Audra has it kind of wrote up is it's it says what I is the beginning part and then whatever it is love admire respect that kind of thing um about you or your about you stacy like i said yeah, yeah. It's something you do so right and because and then it's what you saw as the evidence either it was the effort you put forth you wrote your words in uh your spelling words 10 times each night or you practiced for you know you read a book for 20 minutes last night or something that well and that shows to the child that you're paying attention Right. Like you really saw, wow, she knew I did it 10 times. And not that they cognitively are registering that, but yeah, we receive it different. We hear it different. You know, it makes me think like uh, we, because of where I grew up, we grew up kind of on a farm. All right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for me, if I was in the house reading a book, my dad didn't like that. Right. You had to be outside working physically. And if you weren't physically working, you weren't doing it. That was the same at my house, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and now I look at, I was listening to a, a, a podcast thing uh, that Elon Musk did. Yeah. And Elon, his dad, if he was on the front porch reading a book, his dad was okay with that. <laughs> yeah. not, you know, it shows you so differently. Yeah. That, that was an acceptable behavior, so to speak, of work. Right. For his dad. So if I was reading more, I could be the I could have been the next Elon Musk. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it just goes to show how you know that parent parental involvement sets those guides and those boundaries for when yeah. you're younger that really change, you know, everything, good or bad, yeah. you know. And yeah, if it was a nice day at my house and, and we grew up on a farm too, it was like 70 acres and um, but if it was a nice summer day at my house and, um, you know, we had gotten a library book and I was reading it or something, my mom was like, yeah, you, you got five more minutes and you better get moving. And so we're all in really good shape. Yeah. <laughs> me and me and my brothers were all, we're very busy people. We're like, let's go, let's go. We can't sit. We can't wait. And so it's just a different, yeah. What you were raised with really, um, kind of molds who you are. Yeah. Remember, and we've shared that in other conversations with you too. So right. But sure. yeah. So good. Well, and um, we want to make sure we give you the link to the free booklet yeah. uh, because also there's some strength words that uh, Audra made sure she put in here that really help you recognize those behaviors in a way that maybe you wouldn't have used in the past. Yeah. Because sometimes as parents, we um uh, you struggle to find that good thing that happened out of that. And so yeah. there's some positive, there's like one whole page of just new words to use, you know, um, that can help um, parents 
have better words accessible to them because other than, you know, just saying, oh, that's great. Good job. When I, I feel smart, you know, whatever. Yeah. You can really identify that strength that they're exhibiting. And when you do that again, like I said earlier, it, the per the child feels seen, the person yes. feels seen. And, and, you know, we, we always talk about make sure that, you know, you let other people know they're seen and heard. Yes. Uh, and so that's a component. So we, yeah, we've thrown a little list in there and I, I think they're, um, powerful strength words. So, right. You know, and I, and I guess kind of lastly, I wanted to remind all parents, you are their first and most important teacher yes. in their whole life. Mm -hmm. And so don't forget that. Yeah. And even though there may be a lot of forces you might feel against you, so to speak, yeah. um, that you can't control, there are ones you can control. Right. And remember and, to keep those centered for you and your child yeah and and we it's our responsibility to build them up and you know i I've, I've heard this a long time ago and it says you know when you do criticize how it just kind of chips away and we probably have all seen visuals of how that can you know be harmful to anyone yeah um, and and people in bad relationships we know when they start to manipulate that it's you know a cycle but i think um what is important to remember is that um you know, the criticism is so much more damaging and it can take a hundred attaboys. So you know, I loosely lose that, use that term, but to yeah. fix that one criticism that you gave to your child, because oh, it, for sure. it can, it's crushing, right? It is. Yeah. I, yeah. I know people that have, they were, they were wonderful, you know, children, but they were always criticized because they weren't good enough and it carried through to their adulthood. And even though they became, many of these people I knew became high achievers, they still, their self-worth oh. is, is beaten no matter what they do, no matter what they achieve in their adult years and how far they've come, they still never feel like they're good enough. Yeah. And you just gave me that. chills with that statement because I worked with them and, you know, in, in my world, when I was training, you know, uh, corporate leaders, mm -hmm. uh, you would see, you know, these full grown adults who are very successful, um, functioning and doing well, but internally they felt they were never good enough. They still just yeah. aren't good enough, even though they might have the, the great title, the nice cars, blah, 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 they internally felt they just weren't measuring up. And it was yeah. sad. It was, yeah. It's unfortunate, but you, you nailed it right on the head. That's what a lot of them when they, how they grow up and what happens to them as they move forward. Right. And changing. And you can tell the unfortunate part is um, there's a, a gentleman we went to school with kind of that he took over his dad's business, if right. you will. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, if you talk to him, uh, you can see within 10 seconds, his insecurities. Yeah just mount bounding uh doesn't want to look you in the eye doesn't want to shake your hand uh isn't confident to talk about new topics yeah right? he he pulls yeah. himself out of the conversation real quick um and and he's a smart intelligent guy nice guy nice yeah. guy friendly uh but has so low confidence and self-esteem that you know, you would never expect it at the role and position he has. Right. But if you have the opportunity to talk with him. Yeah. It just makes you feel inside terrible. You know, he's, that. Right. And you, to use that phrase, and I, don't, I would assume most people know that he was, he's under his parents' thumb. You know, he's still yeah. because. Uh, still yeah. trying to prove himself. Still trying and to prove himself. He's our age. <laughs> you know, he's in his 50s. Yeah. This is, you know, this is yeah. where you should be enjoying, you know, who you are and be confident with that and um, and be okay with that. Yeah. yeah. So that's, but yeah. So, so Stacy, that was what we wanted to cover today was really helping parents recognize uh, there is a difference between praising for the effort versus mm -hmm. the performance, right? That result, um, helping them to build a big emotional bank account for mm -hmm. their children right uh, and and really understanding that that sets up their mindset whether it's a fixed or growth mindset really for the future in their life yeah um, you know and and that there's a uh, uh, uh as audra calls it a verbal dap uh, yes there's a confined construction that's really easy to use um yeah formula is always formula that, right yeah. thank you yeah and 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 if you use that formula you don't even have to think about it right 
it rolls off your tongue and everybody's happy. And with practice, so, we all get better at it. So, yeah, right. You know, so, yeah. so that's, yeah, that's what we were hoping to, to cover today, Stacy. And, you know, it's uh, so fun to be on your show and, and uh, we're excited to always be here and we learn a lot from you as well. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. thank you. You know, oh, You're very welcome. I learn a lot from you guys also. And you hit a lot of great topics because there's so much misinformation out there. And I think parents are really confused what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, and I see it in this generation, you know, you could see that a lot of the techniques they're using are not working because you see the outcome of how the, you know, these children are reacting, you know, it, a lot of things are not working. And, you know, um, even though maybe our parents might've been a little tougher on us, but in the end, if you notice, um, my grandparents, your grandparents, you know, us, our generation, um, we grew up more stronger and more independent and, um, you know, we were given more responsibility and, you know, I, I think in that sense, we weren't pampered or babied, you know, and I, I think mm -hmm. that actually plays a big role. And we did not have the, um, the uh, technologies they have today. Oh. And it really should be limited because I think it really, you know, it could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. And so it really needs to be, you know, addressed, I think, you know, um, yeah. A lot of kids too, I see, and I use it as coping mechanisms. They kind of use it to block out the problems that they have, you know, and the issues maybe at home because 70% of, of families come from dysfunctional families. And right. it's, it's a great way to block out, you know, the problems, you know? Yeah. And um, I, I think that, you know, there are ways, you know, that we could stop this, you know, for the, our following generation and fix today's generation by some of the techniques that you guys are applying in each of our podcasts. So I encourage listeners to go back to the, the, the previous podcast that you've done. You have your own podcast on our, you know, we, on the advisor, they have their own podcast. So you could actually go to their podcast and you could see, all the podcasts they've previously done, done. <clears throat> and I encourage everybody to to listen to them because you'll get a lot of ideas and a lot a lot of tools and strategies that you could apply to your own families that could help you, your children, and the communication and bonding with your family. So mm -hmm. I think Thank it's you. great what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so it's, much. it's yeah we don't you know it's it's different times like you said and um, the opportunities are there and so we and, have to and each child is different yeah. you know yes. and so no doubt you will have to adapt these for your children exactly you know exactly. we have four uh, children and they're all a little different and yeah we're grateful for that you know uh real quick and then I'll, I'll let this wrap up i'm sorry but um you made me think of something when the phone accessibility we had a uh, a friend of mine and her daughter uh was supposed to go to the dentist and end up she texted her mom like at the end of the school day and she's like I can't go I, I I'm too nervous about this I have to come home yeah and I'm like what happened you know what'd you do and she's like well I told her no you have to go and text her back and blah 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 and they go back and forth and eventually the daughter came home and didn't go to the dentist and I said that would have never happened when we were kids no but, but why because we didn't have instant access I mean you would have had to go search for a pay phone and then yeah. your parents would have said no you're going and that's the only car we have I mean there was just limitations and we're different and I'm like gosh yeah. you know that, that's really what happened is because now they can get out of things quickly right you know yeah so but anyway I just want to share that quick story so that's awesome yeah thank you no, it's very true. It's very true. And, uh, but you know, positive change can always be available. We just have to start implementing different techniques and different ways of doing things. And, you know, it's just a few tweaks here and there could make a huge difference in people's lives. Agreed. That's everything. Yeah. Everything. Yes. That's everything. Right? Thank you. That's yeah. awesome. Well, it's great to be here today. Thanks for having us again. Oh, it's <laughs> wonderful to have you guys here. I always enjoy you guys and the information. If everybody wants to go into the description box, you'll see the information for Audra and Matt and their their um, website and also the um, technique they were talking about. Um, they will have the link where you can look, look it up and get all the information on different ways to approach things and help your children and help your family and life. So... Thank you so much, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you again, Stacey.